All right, so in this second part of the video, uh, we're going to go over 5, 6, 7, and 8. Uh, in these, so number 5 uh, gives us the equation for us. It tells us it's pert. Uh, it's also bolded and underlined that it's compounding continuously. Uh, it asks us to find the principal uh, amount that we deposited if we want to have a balance of around $5,000 after 10 years in an account that pays 4.5 APR. So, all right, now we got my iPad ready. So, here A is my balance that I'm looking for, uh, and it tells me my balance in this equation. So, A is. Sorry for the delay. I, uh, I had to swap out my pen. The other one wasn't working. So um, A is the balance that they give me. So it's 5,018.60. It's asking me to find the principal. So I'm looking for P. And then E is, remember, E is a number just like pi. Uh, it's a symbol, but it actually just stands for a number. E is roughly 2.7. Um, R, my interest rate is 0 0.045, because remember, you have to write R as a decimal, so it is not 4.5, it's 0 0.045, move it over 2 to the left. And then my time is 10 years. Uh, if you type the E piece of the right side, just the E piece, into the calculator, it will tell you that it's 1.568-ish, so to solve for P. We need to divide by that, and it tells me that my P that I need to deposit, my principal that I need to deposit is roughly $3,200.64, which I know all of us high schoolers have that just sitting in our bank account. So, so five plug it in and solve for whatever variable. And if I ask you for A, solve for A. If it, in this case, it asks us for principles, so we need to solve for P. So just be careful uh, and make sure that you are checking to see if I give you a principal value or the final balance. Number six, uh, solving logs. I know logs was everyone's favorite test, so uh, we're back to that. So we're solving logs. With these, we need to get the log 4x by itself. It's a lot like uh, number two, the square root question, uh, except instead of squaring both sides, we want to do something different. But So we have to get the log piece by itself. So first, we'll subtract this 8. Divide by 2. So it leaves me with log 4x equals 3. And if we remember this test, this is where we get a little fancy with our mathematics here. To cancel out a log, you have to raise both sides to a base of an exponent that matches the base of the log. So I need to put uh, an exponent on both sides, or actually the equation becomes the exponent, and the base of the exponent that I choose needs to match the base of the log. So I need to rewrite this, and what is in blue above is going to turn into an exponent. But if I raise both sides with a 4 as the base of the exponent, I need to do it. If I do it the left side to cancel out my log, I also have to do it to the right side. So if I uh, do what I just did and have an exponent base of 4 to both sides, 4 to the log base of 4, we get to cross out. So x equals 4 cubed, 4 cubed, 64. Uh, you can multiply 4 three times on your fingers, or you can use your calculator, whichever one you prefer. So solving logs, get the log piece by itself. Uh, and then we need to uh, change it over with exponents to get cancel out my log. And then that just solves for x for me real quick. Number seven. Um, blah, blah, blah. Y'all can read. I'm not going to read it out loud. Varies inversely is key here. So it varies inversely. It costs me 30 bucks for 50 people. How much are we going to pay per person if only 40 people go? So varies inversely. 
we have y equals k over x. If it costs me 30 bucks for 50, me and 49 of my closest friends to go, k equals 1500. So if I know k equals 1500, then I can rewrite my equation because I know what k equals. And then I said that my x value was number of people going on the trip. So if I'm only taking 39 of my closest friends here, then there's only 40 of us going. Um, and if there's 40 people going on the trip and you finish this math out, it'll be 3750. Hopefully, with multiple choice, we can exercise a little bit of our critical thinking skills. And if I took 50 people on the trip and it cost us 30 bucks a person, if only 40 people go, so we kick 10 people off the island, it will cost us more per person because we have less people going on the trip with us. So that should eliminate a couple answer choices on uh, the question on the test, is you should know if your money's getting higher or lower even if you have, don't remember how to solve it. All right, last one in this video is number eight. Number eight is not asking for anything fancy. Uh, it's like the test we just took over data regression. There'll be some questions on the semester exam that just like show you a scatter plot, just like the test we just took. And it, is that scatter plot linear? Is it quadratic? Is it exponential? So all we need to do for number eight is know that linear, I won't even draw a graph, linear means line. It's in the name. So linear means line. Quadratic is an upside down or right side up U. But quadratic is a U or a parabola if you want to use the proper mathematical term. Um, exponential, there's exponential growth which looks like this. Or exponential decay which looks like this. Exponential either starts off flat and increases really, really fast, or it starts decreasing really, really fast and starts flattening out. So it, it looks like two totally different graphs because one part's kind of flat and then one part is almost straight up. Logarithmic is exponential that got tipped over. So it just looks sideways. Uh, logarithmic is not a very common graph to see uh, for those 10th graders in chemistry. Uh, solving for pH, y'all dealt with logs a little bit. Um, but it's not a real common regression graph we're going to see, but uh, you may see it on your test. So we'll just cover that. It looks basically like exponential, just sideways. So there's 5 through 8.